Good afternoon once again. Now we are going to do the last module of our CCNA1, building a small network. Remember we are doing CCNA1, Introduction to Networks. And today we are going to finish the last module, which is building a small network. Now remember your journey where you were right from networking today all the way until network security fundamentals that we have covered. Now we are doing the last one, which is build a small network. Based on the things that we have studied here, we have practiced the skills and the commands of configuring our inter-networking devices, the switches and the routers in the lab session, which most of you have mastered very well. Okay, now all you have to do is show your skills inside uh, in your skill-based exam, okay? So let's start today's session, build a small network. We'll be looking at what are the devices used in a small network. We will also look at uh, the protocols and applications used in a small network. Uh, how you have to make your network uh, scalable. Many networks, many enterprises start small, but at some point they become big. So that's why you have to ensure that uh, you make your system scalable. You have to uh, ensure connectivity. Okay, you have already established how to do that with the ping command beautifully. Um, you should know the host and iOS commands, uh, which gives you information about the devices in your network. You should know how to troubleshoot. What are the methodologies to troubleshoot? And troubleshoot issues with devices in the network. So let's go and look at this uh, in detail. First of all, devices in a small network. Yes, majority of businesses start small, okay? And the network can be a very simple design. If you have a uh, home network, which all of you do, if you're tuning in and listening to me, even me, all of us have got over here a small network. Consists of a, a, a connection to our fiber, if you're using your, your, uh, uh, Unify, or if you're using um, Streamix, I don't think, maybe there's some of us still uh, on Streamix, so we are connected to a, a DSL uh, connection. Uh, or if you are in an enterprise, then we'll be using an internet con Ethernet connection, okay? So if, if the enterprise, in our case, since we are using our own uh, home connection, okay? Uh, even a home connection, uh, you may have uh, multiple PCs. Now I look around uh, my table over here, I can count one, two, three, and then other rooms, uh, other PCs, uh, no, I'm not showing off, I'm just saying that the work entails all these machines, okay? If some of you are doing uh, certain things like uh, mining cryptocurrency, then perhaps you will have uh, more computers. If some of you are perhaps uh, avid gamers, you will have one dedicated system where you play games, you know? Or some of you will have only one system, one computer that is your lifeline to the whole world out there. Okay, but traditionally, most of us have got many devices and our smartphone is yet another, our tablets. These are all um, modified computers. In fact, they can do anything that a computer can do in this day and age, sometimes more than that. Okay. So uh, you have to ask yourself, um, in in your uh, and in your uh, surrounding, okay. Uh, if you have a new device, would it be uh, in a small topology? Would it be uh, um, okay to expand your network, or would it be uh, you know cumbersome on your network? So these small things you can do on on uh, at your level at uh, uh, you know. Uh, a small uh, connectivity level. But when you're in an enterprise, in an enterprise, you have to uh, 
look at things in a in a broader scope. You have to ensure that everything, as as we studied earlier, everything the security is optimal. You have to learn how to troubleshoot devices. Okay. Uh, in an enterprise, you may start small, but you know that eventually uh, you you're going to get big. Okay. Uh, many enterprises have been have been uh, working. I have seen um, the network start very small and then eventually become so big. Okay, important thing is that uh, there there was room for scalability. Okay, some factors that will be considered when selecting network devices. Okay, is Cost, speed, expandability, that's scalability, and operating system features and services, okay? So, like, when we created, when we developed your BTEC networking lab, what are the equipments? How many routers do we need? How many switches do we need? What are the computers? We need computers with COM ports. Why COM ports? There's no COM port in any, <laughs> when you buy a PC, it doesn't come with a COM port anymore. Those are only, you know, PCs during the Jurassic Age. <laughs> but we insisted on COM ports. Why? Because we don't want to use an adapter to connect our console cable to our devices. We want our devices directly connected to the PC through the Com, okay. That is why we invested in a com port for our piece. That's why if you go to the BTEC lab, you will see that you have got a com port, okay. So, if you have got a PC, okay, what you do is, let's say a router, okay, so. You get your console cable connected to your COM port RS32 and to your console cable there. Okay. How do you know this is the console cable? There, you can easily figure it out. It's right over here. Okay. Oh, uh, no, there's no time for that. Okay, forget it. So here you see your, uh, it shows you the physical structure of your router, okay, and your console connection, okay? And you can know it's a console cable because the console cable will be blue in color. One side will be uh, having a COM port and the other side will be a connection to your router right over here. Okay. Now you can use this PC. You can use this PC to connect to your router. Okay. Just like I showed you earlier, you can use the terminal to connect to your router. There. No. Okay. There. You're connected to your router. Now it doesn't make sense to do this on Packet Tracer because Packet Tracer, you can access your command line interface directly, correct? So that is why we don't need this. But in the when you're using the, using the real equipment, you need the console cable, okay? Uh, it's very important for you to plan as they say over here, create an IP addressing scheme and use it. Ask yourself, are you going to stick to IP version 4 for your network? Remember, it's an internal network, so IP version 4 will suffice. Or are you going to make it IP version 6 and IP version 4? Okay. What kind of scheme you're going to device? Okay. Are you going to have uh, a wireless connection as well. Okay. You can see our network at uh, uh, 
different institutions. You can see that initially most of them were wired, but now everybody is using a smartphone. They are using portable devices in the form of a tablet. So they need wireless access points. Okay. So are you ensure, ensuring that they can access your uh, um, you can access your wireless access point? Has your access point uh, being uh, um, deployed in different sections of your enterprise? Okay. So that's why most of the networks that we have these days are not just wired. They are com we call them hybrid networks because it's a combination of a wired as well as a wireless Ethernet. Okay. Uh, what are the servers you're going to use? Are you going to use a, a resource server like Moodle? Uh, how many printers you're going to have? All these things you have to plan. Okay. How many intermediary devices you're going to have? Okay. How many access point? What kind of switch? Layer one, layer two, layer three. Uh, and what is the location? So plan, document, IP addressing scheme, all of these as a network engineer, you have to do. Okay, it's your job. Redundancy is very important, my dear students. You have to ensure that if one device fails, the other one can take over. If one router fails, the other one can take over. If one Moodle server fails, the other one can take over. Okay? Because they are basically machines, intermediary machines, or even devices like computer servers. They are all machines. And machines, my dear students, fail. Guaranteed to fail. So you should always have redundancy. Okay? Have multiple connections to the same device. So if one fails, the other one take o takes over. Okay? You should also ask, what is the kind of traffic my enterprise is going to have? Okay. Usually the highest bandwidth is given to, uh, the highest bandwidth taken is voice. And then is your uh, emails and then is instant messages and then FTP. Okay. So based on that, you have to ensure that when it comes to voice and streaming and, uh, you know, uh, video conferencing, the quality of service should be excellent, okay? Especially in enterprises like ours, like Curtin, when we have regular uh, meetings um, with our mother campus in Perth, okay? We need to have a good quality uh, uh, so video so that uh, we can actually uh, have a good meeting and make good decisions. Okay, uh, discuss issues with re certainly uh, uh, with relate relating to policies and then exam decisions and all, which we do every semester. So uh, that's not just the only thing uh, that we meet about. There are so many other things about research and uh, about uh, uh, TNL issues. Okay, at the top level management, they need to have. Uh, perhaps uh, regular meetings. So how do we ensure that quality of service? Okay, so these all traffic management is also part of your plan. Okay. So small network applications and protocols. Of course, they will be applicable to small network, but at the same time, also to large networks. Two forms of software programs or processes that provide access to the network are your network applications, okay, and application layer services. Network applications, the most important of these is a network operating system, okay? You should have a network operating system. You cannot just have a, a operating system that is not network enabled. You should have some services, okay? that allow you to transfer data, 
Okay, so all these things, again, should be part of your plan. What are the protocols that you're going to employ in your small network or inside your large network? Okay. Are you going to be sticking to uh, is security guaranteed? Are you going to be sticking to Telnet or you're going to have SSH? Are you going to have HTTP or HTTPS? Or are you going to have a combination of both of them? Um, when you want to send the email from your device to the server, you use SMTP. When you deliver from the server to your device, are you going to just use PopTree or you're going to use PopTree as well as IMAP? Or just stick with IMAP because you can put the email, not only on, on your device, it will be on the server and other devices connected to it will also get the update. Okay. Are you going to use FTP or SFTP? Here, it will be encrypted. And if you have a DHCP, what kind of DHCP is it? Okay. Is it based on your router or is it based on a computer that gives DHCP addresses? Okay. What is your DNS? Okay. All these things you have to plan, my dear students. Okay. Actually, it's very interesting. It's planning itself. It's such a rewarding and um, interesting uh, part of building a network. Uh, that is, if you are if you love networking. Okay. Uh, for example, personally, I love this uh, topic of networking. It, it's 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 so interesting that even at the planning stage, you know, plan it on a piece of paper. Or plan it first in your mind, then plan it on a piece of paper, then go to Packet Tracer and try it out. Everything starts with Packet Tracer, my dear students. Okay. And once you do it on Packet Tracer, you can take it and put it in the real world. Okay. What are the common protocols? Okay that you're going to use in your small network or in, uh, or in your large network, okay? You have to ensure that there is end-to-end -end communication, uh, depending on what kind of messages, what is the syntax of the me messages, uh, <laughs> what is the meaning of the information fields and how many messages you have to send, okay? And how they interact with the lower layer. So depends on different companies. Um, they have a policy like uh, if they want to access, they only use secure shell, okay? Or SFTP or HTTPS, nothing else, okay? Because security is very important. Again, okay, depends. You're giving access to what, okay? If you look at the businesses today, uh, most of the bandwidth is taken by voice and video applications. Okay, so you also as an administrator should ensure that you have a proper equipment to take care of that. Okay. For real time, infra, uh, for real time applications, you should have infrastructure. Uh, you should have IP telephones that takes uh, into features your voice over IP. You should have a real time applications like your WebEx. Okay. You know, WebEx was something that we used once in a while to communicate with, uh, <laughs> with Perth until the pandemic struck us, okay? Then we have got new names coming out like Zoom, WebEx, uh, Google Meet, and so on, <laughs> okay? Now we know that we had this uh, technology actually uh, more than uh, a decade but actually, we've been using them uh, in, in, in a very uh, intensive way for the past one year. Why? Because of the need, because of the necessity, <laughs> which is the pandemic. Okay. So perhaps after even the pandemic is over, I don't think so. We will stop using WebEx because we have understood how, how uh, it makes our life easier and learning um, also easier, okay? And teaching as well, okay? 
well, maybe not teaching because sometimes I think it's much work. Okay, now, how do we scale to a larger network? Once we build a small network, we have to ensure that our network is scalable. That means you can add new intermediary devices and new uh, workstations and end devices to make the network big. Okay. Yes, growth is a natural process for all small businesses, and there is not a single enterprise or a small uh, and uh, or business that does not have a computer network. Get it? That is why network engineer is a very safe and good job because every place there is a demand for network engineers. Okay. So, in order to make sure that your network, a small network, is scalable, there are certain things that you have to do. You have to document your network. You have to have a detailed blueprint, physical and logical. Okay? Just imagine every week when you do your... <laughs> when you do your lab exercise, that topology diagram was not given to you. The IP addresses was not given to you. Wouldn't you be blur and wouldn't you be confused? Okay. Now you have to do the same thing for your enterprise and you have to guard it. Okay. Now you cannot share this blueprint with anyone, my dear students. Okay. You have to, because it's a security issue. If one day, once they see where you have got your multi-layer switches and where is your routers, oops, okay, you're inviting trouble. You have to guard it, okay? Just anybody cannot go to the office of the network administrator or the network engineer, okay? You cannot just walk in, okay? It's like an intelligence office. You have to protect it. You should have a device inventory. What are the different devices? Send your technicians and make an inventory of all the workstations, all the routers, all the switches, all the wireless access points. What is the range of those wireless access points? Okay. Make a budget. Your equipment is old. Make a budget for new equipment. Put it in an email. Send it to your CEO. And if the network fails in future, and they come back to you and they tell you why, you can say, hey, I ask for these new devices, but you did not give it to me in the budget. So it's not my fault. You have to always protect yourself as a network engineer. Since you don't give me the equipment, you cannot expect me to always make sure that the network is up optimum. And then they will listen to you. Okay? Do a traffic analysis in your network. Okay? Where the traffic is the highest. Run Wireshark. Run other tools to study your network traffic. You can use all these elements to make decisions, okay? And as you do this, my dear students, when you start from scratch, okay, you get more experience. I told you, I've had students in this field, okay, who have only a diploma, okay, not even a degree, and then they have just uh, gone and done CCNA. After doing the CCNA, they went for the certification exam. And just with that, they are earning very well. They are being sent to other countries to configure the network. Okay. I've got this student who is um, working for uh, Petronas and, you know, he's being sent to Vietnam, to Philippines, just to go there and ensure his job is to make sure that the network is running. 
Sending a guy all the way to another place, that means he's got so much experience and he knows his stuff so well that he's being sent around different places to teach other people how to maintain their network. Okay? So that's why if you choose this career, it will be very rewarding. But, you know, there's a certain amount of aptitude involved, especially when you do CCNA 2 and 3, you will realize you need a certain amount of aptitude and you need practice, 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 practice. So you should also under, understand what kind of traffic and what is the traffic flow pattern, okay? So one way to do that is to study your traffic during peak utilization, okay? On a Monday or a Tuesday or Wednesday when uh, there is a peak utilization, study the traffic, analyze it, okay? Which network segment is taking the highest amount of traffic, is using the highest amount of traffic? Use a protocol analyzer, okay? And then you can make decisions. If this segment is using a lot, perhaps I need to add redundancy to this segment, okay? A very important tool at the hand of a network engineer is Packet Tracer. The network engineer always does testing on Packet Tracer. He has got a blueprint on Packet Tracer and he tests it. And then if it works over there, he deploys it to the real world. Okay, that's why I kept telling you right from the beginning, Packet Tracer is your friend. He's going to teach you how to network. Many operating systems, you know, they tell you about the uh, <clears throat> the network utilization and also uh, which apps uh, use uh, what features, okay? Uh, there are also many third-party software that network administrators can use uh, to find out the operating system version, to find out the CPU utilization, RAM utilization, drive utilization, what are the non-network applications you are running, what are the network applications you are running, okay? You can actually find out many things by using these tools. You can find out uh, here, you can see for the, with regards to my CPU, okay? And my, for example, my memory is 32 gigabytes. My 32 gigabytes, you just observe how much is being used, okay? And my CPU, what am I doing? I'm just moving my mouse right now and running a PowerPoint application in the background. And what's happening with my CPU, okay? Now, you can study the whole workstation and devices by using certain software tools, okay? Now, this is me only studying one computer, the one I'm using, okay, in the background. You see, I'm using a WebEx system to communicate with you. Look at my uh, CPU performance, okay? press the start button, you see there's a spike, okay? There another spike. Study your memory, study your disk, study your Wi-Fi, okay? Uh, let's not go to the Wi-Fi, okay? Uh, you know, you can study and you can also find out, you know, certain applications if they use um, a huge chunk of your CPU, okay? Uh, which application, uh, sorry. Which application is using a huge chunk? Okay. Now, if you see over here, probably my WebEx system is one of the uh, background process that is using a huge chunk. Okay. So you can know these details. Okay. Uh, right from here. What are the services that are running in the background? Which service you want to stop? Okay. And other details. Okay, so this is for me checking on my own uh, system and you can do the same, but you as a network engineer, you can have uh, packages, a software that can actually st uh, study every computer in the background in your network, okay? And once you document this, you can build an image of what is happening inside your uh, enterprise. 
Very fine connectivity is something that we have done right from the beginning, okay, of uh, this unit. We have learned that we le use the ping command to verify connectivity, and that is a tool that you can use even in your enterprise, okay? Ping, 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 to ensure that you have got uh, connectivity in your network, okay? The ping command usually sends four ICMP echo messages, and then you get uh, those four echo replies, okay? You already know this, okay? Now, there are some indicators. We have got the exclamation mark, full stop, and U, okay? So exclamation mark indicates successful receipt. Period means that the time expired. Uh, waiting for an echo reply message. So it did not get a reply and the time has expired. And the uppercase U indicates a router along the path. Okay. So actually your ping, you can give a extended ping. All you have to do is type ping and then press enter. Okay. So your extended ping is entered in the privilege exec mode. Okay. And then in that, you can press enter and then try different IP addresses. And then it tells you whether you have a connectivity or not. Okay. The same goes for tracert. Okay. You have used traceroute and tracert. You know that your uh, tracert gives you connection. Uh, tells you how many hops you have to go between uh, different devices. Okay, for example, uh, you see I'm always nervous when I run my tracer because my ISP may not like me snooping around. Okay, so there, let's do it on, um, let's say, uh, www.cisco.com. One, two, three. No, no, cannot get from three. No, 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 no. Three, no, cannot reach three. Four, cannot reach. Okay, if the fifth one also cannot reach, perhaps it's not, this was not a good example. Uh, yeah, okay. So you see some websites, you cannot access it, okay? They have got security inbuilt, okay? Uh, let's say www. bbc.com. Let's try this. How many hops? One, two. Three. Four, four hops. I've gone through four routers. Okay actually three routers. The first one is, starts with one number. Okay, there we go. Sixth, seventh, eighth router. Okay, it takes me eight routers to reach bbc.com. Okay. Okay, now, here it tells you, uh, in your network, you can run your trace, uh, trace cert or trace route. Uh, it tells you uh, actually how many routers do you, how many hops do you take to access a certain uh, website, okay? Or perhaps access a certain IP address because you know that this website is actually an IP address, correct? Because as per the DNS service, we studied this in the morning. You can watch the video later that 
every uh, DNS server will map the IP address to a uh, fully qualified domain name system, your DNS name system. Okay, so you can actually use your IP address, run a tracer on your IP address, and see how many hops it takes you uh, to reach that. Actually, this is, can be a tool to also find out uh, issues with certain connections, okay? Like here, you see what they do. Uh, yeah, if previously, if you observe what happened was, uh, I had an issue with uh, accessing my uh, www.cisco.net. I stopped the tracer. I didn't have to wait all the way. So I press control C. So control C will stop it, okay? So you see, when you continue like that, you press control C because you know that you won't get a reply Perhaps they have, uh, you know, disabled their ICMP for that. They have a firewall or something else, a package, a software. So you won't get anywhere. So press Control C to disable it, okay? To stop your tracer. You can also run your tracer, okay? Uh, to find out the connectivity, the hops. If you have got certain issue between two uh, networks, for example, over here, if uh, three, four, and five are having issues, then you know that there's something wrong with that area. And you can go and perhaps fix it. Okay. So this can also be used as a troubleshooting tool. Okay. Just like ping, your tracer also has got many parameters and you can run your tracer in extended mode, see? Just type trace, tracer, okay? And then mention your target, okay? And then you can run it in an extended mode as well with all its other extensions. It's important for you to document your uh, your, your command. For example, uh, the replies of your ping and your tracer. You see, I'm going to run the same thing uh, which I did before, but now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to see the reply here. Rather, I'm going to store it in a file, okay? Let's say uh, I store it in a file. Uh, no, this is a bad example. See, uh, I create a file. Um, Make, uh, let's create a folder, uh, temp2, okay, cd, temp2, okay, now that I have done this, now what I do is I say uh, tracer, but rather than seeing the reply here, I store it in a file under temp2, and I say, uh, hops to bbc.txt, okay, there. So you see tracer is happening, but it's not showing you the output. Rather, it's saving it. You see, you're sending the output to a file, hops to bbc.txt. This is called output redirection, my dear students, okay? So this is something that computing uh, people use a lot. So what we are doing is we are using a tracer, but now the tracer, uh, Values are being saved to this file. So you have to wait. Once it's over, you can open this file that it's over. Okay. So you can just say type hops to bbc.txt. There, you see, I get the value. Even I can go and check the file on my C drive, uh, temp2. That hops to BBC. If I open it, I can see I have documented this. Okay. And I can actually uh, do something like this on my own network. On my own network, I can do something like this to find out which router the connectivity is missing and what is the issue. I can go and perhaps study. Okay. 
If you come from here, it starts with one, two, three, four. Okay, so four hops. Yeah. So creating uh, a proper uh, documentation, okay, and storing things in a text file and labeling it properly is something which a network engineer must do. So now let's go to some host and iOS commands that you have to uh, know as a network engineer, okay? So the tools of a network engineer is remembering all the iOS commands, okay? And the more you work, in this field with intermediary devices like switches and routers, the better you get at knowing the iOS commands, okay? One of the most important commands is ipconfig and ipconfig slash all, which gives you an idea of the details, including your IP version 4, IP version 6, your MAC address, all the details, okay? If you're getting your IP address from a DHCP, uh, uh, server, okay, all those details, it will be given to you, okay? You can also give commands like ipconfig release and ipconfig renew. If you are not happy with your DHCP uh, client address that is given to you, you can release and get a new one, okay? Or, you know, you can also release your, for example, uh, your uh, IP config display DNS command displays all of the cache DNS entries on a Windows computer system. Tells you what are all the cache DNS systems uh, names. Okay. Why it has to be cached so that you can access it faster. It doesn't have to go to the server to do an IP to a fully qualified domain name system. Okay. So these are some commands that, you know, you have to uh, memorize and use it as a tool in your weaponry as a network administrator. Sorry. On a Linux or a Mac system, ipconfig, instead of typing that, we type ifconfig. Okay. It gives you information uh, on your Linux or on your um, Apple system. On a Mac host, uh, on a graphical user interface of a Mac host, you can open uh, network preferences advanced and then type your if config, okay? To get more information. You also have the op command that gives you information uh, in your Windows, Linux or Mac system, tells you information about your op cache that means uh what is your ip address to mac address uh mapping okay or binding so you can also uh remove that cache by typing net sh interface ip delete okay although you have to be a system administrator to do that okay so you can have a look at your ARP database. So all these commands will help you, my dear students. So these are some of the common show commands, show running configuration, show interface, show IP interface, uh, show ARP, show IP root, show protocols, show version, another command which you have run, show IP version four, interface brief, show IP version six, interface brief, okay? Some of these commands, it has to be inside you already. You know, uh, you you have to practice it so many times that it, it will become part of your uh, language when you're talking to the router or to the switch. You can also give the show CDP neighbor command. Okay, it tells you uh, what are the devices. Okay, configured host name of a switch, router, or other devices. It will give you your address list. It will give you a port identifier, capabilities list, platform. Okay. Again, 
you need to be uh, an administrator, okay? That is the reason giving a username and password is so important on your routers and switch, okay? So you can also give show CDP neighbors detail to get the detail about all the neighbors, all your devices. Okay, here I'm using a switch. One of the devices is a switch uh, connected to gigabytes 001. Okay, uh, this is the switch and the connection is on fast Ethernet 5. Okay. So you can get the details like that. Yeah, this is the command which we talked about, show IP interface brief, show IP interface and so on. You can run these commands, okay? So these are some things, my dear students, that you have, uh, most of these commands have already tried out in the lab session, okay? And some of these commands, you can actually again try it out in your lab exercises over here. Okay, these lab exercises, okay, there, troubleshooting, connectivity issues, and test network latency, and ping and trace route, okay? So just go through these lab exercises and test and uh, try it out on your packet tracer. This is like uh, a skill that you're preparing yourself for your uh, skill-based exam, okay? Now, you may not remember all these commands because you are perhaps new and uh, you haven't tried it out, uh, only you have tried it out for one semester. So perhaps you can create a list of all these commands. And for your skill-based exam, uh, you can actually have a look, okay? So that you can access it faster because you don't have much time. You have to ensure that you build a topology and, and establish a connection. So some of the methodologies you can use to do troubleshooting as a network engineer. I use the term network engineer and network administrator interchangeably, but they are the same thing, okay? Now, if you follow a process which is uh, well-defined, it would be something like this. First, identify the problem, okay? Uh, establish a theory of probable cause and then test the theory to determine the cause, okay? Establish a plan of action. Now, this is where your packet tracer is very important in this area. Okay. Then establish again packet tracer. Try it out. Verify the solution. Document the findings, actions, and outcomes when you implement the solution. So, this is the proper way of doing things. Okay. A sort of a, you know, this is the age of uh, doing checklists. When you have a checklist, uh, your life will become much more easier and you, you tend to do lesser mistakes. The same goes for a network administrator. Documentation is so important. Okay. And you have to also ask yourself the question, as a network engineer, do I resolve it at my level or do I report it to the higher management? Okay, so you have to ask yourself that question, do I resolve or escalate? which issues I have to resolve and which issues I have to escalate. Because if you escalate everything, uh, then your top management will say, something wrong with this guy, he cannot make decisions. I think um, instead of doing uh, uh, my work, I have to do his work as well, okay? So there are certain things that you have to make a decision, my dear students, as a system administrator. You cannot just every time go to the top management and say, what do I do for this? What do I know? The whole reason you are hired is to ensure that you make decisions so that the network uh, goes very well. Escalate when you, there are certain issues with regards to a person or an employee creating a problem and causing the network to suffer. Then you escalate and you go to the CEO and say, I have got this problem because of this application or this uh, uh, website download happening by this employee. And then the CEO will get HR involved and then HR will do an inquiry and take relative action, okay? 
So you have to, you cannot escalate everything. Then you people may, may regard you as incompetent. Okay, you have to show a certain amount of competency and decision making as a network uh, uh, engineer. And in fact, once you go through these steps, the more you do this, that experience that you get will make you better. Okay. The iOS has got a debug command that allows the administrator to display the operating system processes, protocols, mechanism, and event messages so that they can do a analysis, okay? You can also, uh, de you know, you can give the no debug so that, you know, you can switch this off. And if you want to switch it on again, you can enter undebug, okay? So that is something else that you can do. The problem with this is you have to be careful because the debug command can create a substantial amount of out output and use a lot of your system resources. So be careful when you're using this on your routers or your switches. Okay. You can also use a terminal monitor command, okay, or a telnet command, okay. Using debug and some other iOS messages, actually, uh, the output is not automatically displayed on remote connections because you have not given that permission when you are setting up your VTY lines, okay? So in order to display log messages, as a system administrator, uh, what you have to do is log in by giving the correct password. Okay, if you don't have a password, anybody can do this. Use the terminal, monitor, privilege, exec command. Okay. If you want to stop logging, then use terminal, no monitor, privilege, exec command. Okay. These are some things, perhaps, at this level, you won't need it. That's one of the reasons, you know, that I told you when you are setting up your uh, routers and switch, do not give a password because at this level, you have to understand the communication and the connections and the basic commands of giving the IP address and the subnet mask and so on. You have to understand the IP uh, version 4, IP version 6. Perhaps you will learn more, you will be implementing more of this at the security level in CCNA2 and CCNA3. Some of the troubleshooting scenarios, let's just go through, okay? When you have a duplex operation and a mismatch happens, okay? So ensuring that, you know, your ethernet interfaces, they operate uh, in the same duplex mode. There is something called Ethernet Auto Negotiation Feature, okay? And if this, that this one fails, okay? And, you know, uh, the connected devices, uh, usually uh, they are compatible with each other, okay? And they ensure that the connectivity is happening. Now, just imagine one of the two connected devices is working at full duplex, and the one is at half duplex. So you have a mismatch, and then you have a problem. Okay, so that means perhaps the network engineer or the technician has misconfigured the interface. Okay, because you can do that on a router or a switch, make it half duplex or full duplex. Okay, so when you have a half duplex communicating with a full duplex, this kind of mismatch can happen. So you have to take care, ensure that this kind of scenario does not happen. Another thing is uh, incorrect IP version four assignment. Okay, if you are giving a static IP version four address, but you have also enabled the DHCP, then there will be confusion. Okay, so you have to you know, uh, ensure that uh, you, 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 you,
do have a certain policy, like if anybody gives an IP version for static address to the machine, immediately cut them off from the network. Okay, you should configure your router to do that. Okay. Using, you know, your, your show IP interface or show IP interface brief command to verify what IP version for addresses assigned to a network, okay, would also be helpful. Another issue is on Windows-based machines, they have got something called uh, APIPA, Automatic Private IP Addressing, okay? So this one gives a IP address within this range, okay? If that is given by your Windows PC, uh, it may not be able to communicate with the other computers on the subnet. So you have to be aware of this Windows uh, loophole, okay? And <laughs> Uh, disable your API PA addressing, okay? Other uh, Linux and Mac, they do not have API PA, only this is a Windows problem. So you should be aware of this. And when you give your DHCP server, uh, uh, the authority to give IP addresses to all the devices, make sure that uh, this one is uh, not running, okay? Um, you also have to ensure that your default gateway is the proper device, okay? It should be given the proper IP devices and it should be on the same network, okay? And should be able to forward traffic to the other network. So default gateway issues also uh, because of misconfiguration. You have experienced this. Your PC cannot communicate, cannot uh, ping outside the network because you have not given the default gateway. Or perhaps if you have got the DHCP problems, your DHCP server uh, has not been configured properly. Of course, DHCP is something that you're not going to touch or study in this semester. You, you're going to be introduced to configuring DHCP in, in your CCNA too. Okay, but you have to know that uh, as a network administrator, that could be one of the causes. Okay, again, uh, using your IP configuration, you can know details about this, okay? IP config and IP config forward slash all. On a router, you can type show IP root command to list the routing tables and verify that the default gateway is the default root and it has been set, okay? Also, you have to, you know, troubleshoot your DNS, okay? If you cannot, uh, if your DNS is not working, then try to find out, use your NS lookup, okay? To find out what is your uh, DNS server and what is the uh, issues okay? in your local network. Again, details about DNS you will learn in other CCNAs. So that brings us to the end of chapter 17. Anyone's, anyone has any questions relating to chapter 17? Today we have gone beyond time. Um, it's 10 minutes past four. Anyone has any question? With regards to chapter 17? Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh...